Oftentimes, when searching for a compelling story, Hollywood directors will turn to the literary world for inspiration. But transmediation is not always easy. Too often, adaptations fall short when attempting to depict complex and nuanced literary narratives. Director Ridley Scott committed one particularly interesting example of literary butchery with his film adaptation of one of the best science fiction books ever written, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? The most obvious difference between Philip K. Dick's original novel and Blade Runner is in the film noir themes that Scott so forcibly put into the narrative. In terms of costumes and hairstyle, many of these were borrowed from the post-war noir period. Rachel, for example, is seen with a 1940s hairstyle that eludes such femme fatales as Mildred Pierce, and it's clear that much of the period's aesthetic was incorporated into the film. Even with its use of soundscape, Blade Runner evokes an earlier style. With a moody saxophone lead, the film's soundtrack is a fusion of downbeat jazz and electronic music that calls to mind the gritty and unforgiving Los Angeles depicted in the private eye genre. It's unclear what motivation Scott had for incorporating noir elements into his film, because nothing in the book suggests a thematic link to the era. Perhaps by looking to the past for visual style, Scott hoped to differentiate his movie from the ultra-sterile look associated with other science fiction works such as Logan's Run and THX 1138. More likely, however, is that he used the noir genre as a form of shorthand in order to quicker establish mood and character. It is obvious with any book-to-film adaptation that certain elements need to be cut out in the interest of saving time. However, the reason behind some of the differences between the book and the movie are puzzling. The first obvious difference between the novel and the movie is the points at which the narrative start, and by extension, how they frame the main character and his motivations. In Electric Sheep, bounty hunter Rick Deckard's main objective is to own a real animal. In this depiction of the future, the animals of Earth are dropping into extinction fast and hard. Owning and caring for a real animal is not only regarded as a status symbol, but it is also considered a moral responsibility. However, since real living animals are so rare, they are also outrageously expensive. Deckard and his wife, who is non-existent in the film, can't afford a live animal, so in order to main status, they own an electric sheep, which they pass off as real. The Deckard and electric sheep only chooses to accept the dangerous task of hunting down the androids in order to be able to purchase a real animal for himself. These details surrounding animals and their disappearance are hardly mentioned in the film. Once when Deckard notices the owl in Tyrell's office, and again when he gets the snakeskin analyzed. Finest quality, superior workmanship. There is a maker serial number 9906947XB71. Interesting. Not fish, snake scale. Snake. And both of these situations play almost no narrative significance. In Blade Runner, Deckard accepts his task because he feels a sense of duty, albeit encouraged by his former captain. Clearly, Scott didn't think this selfish motivation was very fitting for a noir detective, so he dropped it from the script. Or, maybe, Scott didn't think that Harrison Ford, having previously played Han Solo, would have been able to convincingly show an emotional investment towards a toad or a goat, so instead he emphasized his interest to the android, Rachel. In addition to changing the characters and their motivations, Scott changes the setting to match a more familiar, rain-soaked, noir city. The most obvious difference in setting is the geographic change from San Francisco to Los Angeles. He also changed the lore surrounding the narrative. Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is set several years after a catastrophic nuclear holocaust called World War Terminus. This war left a layer of dust that covered the earth, blotting out most of its sunlight. In Electric Sheep, the earth is dying and masses of people are leaving, or have already, to colonize other worlds. The book describes huge expanses of the city being empty as the majority of Earth's population has either left or is leaving. Blade Runner, on the other hand, depicts a different city, one that's not just populated but overpopulated. Again, this can be seen as an attempt by the filmmaker to draw audiences away from a dusty and desolate vision of the city and more towards one depicted in the rain-soaked noir films. 
By mixing the conventions of noir and science fiction, scholars claim that Scott had brought about a new type of genre. Cyberpunk explores many of the same themes as its generic parents of science fiction and noir, but cyberpunk derives its narratives from the protagonist's struggle against an increasingly urban and digital, and most importantly dehumanized and corporatized environment. By hybridizing the science fiction and noir genres, Ridley Scott's adaptation takes the desolate and unique universe created by Philip K. Dick and reduces it to an all-too-familiar Los Angeles crime story retrofitted for the future. Whether applying hard-boiled motifs to Dick's novel was necessary for audiences to be interested is up for the individual to decide. What can be said for certain is that the film alters many of the questions the book sets out to ask about humanity and offers its own answers. It's own.